Welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. I'm Bob Delaney, Executive Director of the Institute for Labor Studies and Research. Labor Vision, a production of the Institute, focuses on topics of importance to working Rhode Islanders. We hope you enjoy this edition. Welcome to this edition of Labor Vision. I'm your co-host today, Bob Delaney, and hosting this show with me, or co-hosting this show with me, is Erica Hammond. Hi, Erica. Hello, how are you guys? The This is a very different style of our at-home Labor Vision, and Erica has been hosting a number of shows up until this point. And we've decided to do our regular What's Up at the Institute edition in uh, this copy of Labor Vision. And we wanted to highlight some of the things that have been taking place at the Institute to accompany a newsletter that we sent out earlier this week. I think it's important to note that online education, both synchronous and asynchronous, has been a piece of post-secondary institutions and some public school institutions for more than 10 years. But nobody ever really thought that we would be immersed so quickly and so deeply and in order for that to happen, uh, there is a requirement and will continue to be a requirement on the part of public school teachers and post-secondary institutions and institutions of education and training like the Institute, where we have to provide education and training and professional development around online education to the instructors and the teachers that work at the Institute, both as adjunct faculty and as full-time instructors. So mm -hmm. we're gonna dedicate this particular program to having a conversation with some of the people at the Institute who have been really deeply involved in not just providing professional development for the instructors at the Institute, but for really designing a pathway and a portal for our students to be effective, at least we hope to be effective, on this kind of brand new immersion overnight of online learning. And uh, Erica, I want to uh, have a conversation with you or you to have a conversation with the rest of us around from the technology piece of it, you've been really active in making sure that um, the Institute has had the ability to be able to make this transition and between you and Margarita in particular, um, you've really led the way. Thank you. I mean, it's been definitely a learning curve uh, for all of us, but uh, I think definitely for myself in playing around with a lot of the tools, like we're using Zoom. Um, that was definitely a learning experience, but it seems to be working out really well. Um, and there's a lot of different tools that you can use. Like I know that um, both Fatima and Sabine will talk about Google Classroom or Google Sites, which they're both using for their programs. And that's been a really great tool to use. So we'll all come we out have, very tech savvy. Yeah, and we've been really lucky. The Institute was able to register for Google Suites. Um, that's generally allocated to other in educational institutions, and we were eligible to get it, which gave us a broader access to Google Sites, Google right. Classroom, Google Meet. And, and I think that the staff have made more than effective use on using those technologies. So if we could maybe jump over to Sabine, and Sabine is the Director of Adult Literacy at the Institute for Labor Studies and Research, um, and has done an outstanding job in moving the Institute forward, but also helping to support some of the initiatives of adult learning at a state level. Hi, everybody. Um, so um, a few weeks ago, we suspended all of our in-person classes. Um, we had eight uh, ESL English for Speakers of Other Languages classes that we were running when that happened. Um, and um, we have between 10 and 20 adult learners in each of those classes. Um, and from one week to the next, we had to figure out how to continue the language learning without doing it in person. So um, 
our teachers have tried a million different things um, and we're all learning how to use new tools. Um, you know, we have our uh, learner population has a big wide range of English language proficiency and also computer skills. Um, so we have, you know, some people who are near fluent in English and uh, have computers at home and have no problem figuring out on their own how to use Google Classroom and Zoom video conferencing and emailing with their teacher. Um, and then we have some beginner level uh, language learners who, um, you know, might not, who also might not have a computer at home, um, may not uh, have an email um, that they are comfortable using. Um, and so it's much harder to make that jump for those learners. Um, but we've been very flexible. Uh, teachers, especially for the lower literacy levels, are using um, technology and, and tools and apps that are that our learners are already comfortable with so they don't have to learn a whole new um, you know set of skills all at once um, obviously we're building digital literacy skills now um, at a much faster pace than before because it, we need it um, to so it seems like Sabine you've really given the opportunity to for people to use the technology that they're familiar with. So you really went to where they were as opposed to coming down with an edict and saying, this is what you need to do. Right, so for example, the beginner level classes, um, you know, most people who are English language learners have family in other countries. And um, a lot of people use a particular application called WhatsApp to communicate with family abroad because you can do international texting um, and messaging uh, and photos and send photos, videos, audio messages, um, you know, to people in other in other countries just using it, you know, it's using Wi Fi. Um, but that's something that most people have, are already very familiar with. And so that's something that we're using with the um, The low literacy level groups. Um, because they, you know, they know how to use it. They've got it already set up on their phone. It's not another app they have to download. And we can just continue the communication immediately um, and uh, start from there. So some classes have, you know, have groups that that's how they're, that's how the teacher is communicating with the students, sending assignments, um, sending videos. Students take pictures of their work or record videos and send them back to their teachers that way. Um, and then the, the higher levels and, and other groups that have more proficiency or are more comfortable with using computers are using Google Classroom. Um, you know, actually, I've been finding that um, because all the K-12 schools are doing, um, you know, remote learning and many people in our classes are parents, so they have kids who are using Google Classroom so that, you know, so, that, so they're familiar with it because of their oh, children are using it. Um, and so that's something that some teachers have been using, um, but it's really a mix of different things. Um, we also created a website using Google Sites, um, which Erica can pull up now. Yeah, I'll share that screen. And so this is a website that our um, technology point person, um, Margarita Martinez, designed. And uh, this is the home page. So it's really um, a one, one stop shopping you have all of our english classes are here you can access it all in one place so our home page as you can see has the um the the some information about the census some information about um how to apply for unemployment insurance um different resources if you scroll down um you know then it tells you you could click on your the your class page to to see messages from your teacher so okay. um if you want to click um, go down to Claudia Saturday beginner you can see what a beginner level um, class page looks like we have you know multilingual instructions this is our website this is what we're going to be using um, some pictures of um, different activities they can do at home websites with videos um, if you keep scrolling down there's some fun pictures down below of uh, 
household objects, things like that, that um, the teacher had sent out, you know, for, for students to practice vocabulary around the house, um, some test practice and that kind of thing. So um, Sabine, this really does become a full resource um, for teachers to engage students. And uh, I, I really wanna thank you for um, you and Margarita and the teachers who have spent the time to ensure that we have something in place before we get to the students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a great place to uh, get information out to people. It's very easily accessible with one click of a button, they get to their class page. They don't mm -hmm. have to log into anything. Um, so it's great for people um, who don't, who might not use email yet. Um, and then at the bottom of our homepage, we have a link to a, a website that we made for teachers, um, planning resources for teachers. So if you just open that one up, um, this is one that we compiled a lot of different lesson planning resources for teachers to access. Um, we have a, a lot of different um, adult ed materials to teach about the census, a lot of ESL websites, um, you know, texts, online texts, um, other websites with uh, leveled, you know, different levels of, of um, material. So, you know, we, we, when all of this started happening and we had so much change happening at once, it was just email after email with resources all over the place. So this was right. a way that we could put everything um, in one in one location and not overwhelm people. Um, and I think Sabine, if I'm not mistaken, um, after a lot of this was designed, um, you and I think Margarita had the opportunity to work with the Tech Hub and uh, provide some professional development for other teachers through the Tech Hub. Correct? Yes. So um, you know the. the the community of adult education providers in Rhode Island is very strong and there's been a lot of great work from teachers, different programs um, and the tech hub and the PD center of, uh, you know, getting people to communicate, share ideas, what's happening, what are people trying, what's working. And so, yes, Margarita was able to uh, present the website um, on one of those conference calls and share what we're doing with other programs. Hey, that's really great. I want to thank yeah. you for the work that you've done. I know that um, it's been a, it's been interesting and it's been a lot of work. I think uh, many of our teachers and many of our staff have worked longer hours on this than they would have had they been in the office where all the mm -hmm. creature comforts that you would use to support a program are right there. Uh, from the moment that people went into their office to take their computer home because everything was there. So I want to thank you that I want to move over to uh, to Fatima. Um, Fatima, you're responsible for the teacher assistant training program. And much like um, Sabine, you were in the middle of this thing. And all of a sudden, um, we had classes running, classes scheduled. And now it was the baptism of fire to transfer it all over. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, a month ago, uh, just about, everything came to a halt, um, our classes. And um, so for that first week, we were sort of, um, you know, working as a team to figure out where we're going next, to where we're going from here. And I think by the staff meeting every day for that first week that we we're all online, um, it was to me a great resource. It was how I could navigate, uh, you know, working online for myself, for my students, for the instructors of this mm -hmm. of the teaching program. Um, we were in the middle of a cohort. Um, so class was already halfway when we had to stop everything. So within a week, we were able to get the classes online. First, however, we had to, uh, ex you know, explore different platforms, which we did together, uh, the staff, and present that to the instructors and also to the students who would be participating in the in the TA classes now online. So we spent time doing some professional development um, for the instructors on how to use it. And, um, and then also to have the students become comfortable in using these, uh, this new platform, this new way of learning. Uh, most have never taken an online class 
um, and I never worked online myself. So that was uh, a very interesting week, but it, it worked. We are now uh, the first, we had two cohorts. Uh, the first cohort is today is their last day um, of the online class. And we did start another cohort um, from the first day of class. And this is uh, primarily a group of students who are coming from the Woonsocket area that we've been trying to work with for a very long time as they needed a lot of um, you know, help in their school system. And so we are now halfway through that cohort. So everything is working. We've been in touch a lot online. And I also learned you know, from that first week or two working together and meeting the staff on a daily basis is how I learned about the, the Google sites uh, from, um, from Sabine and Margarita. And I thought that was a great tool for the students and the teachers as well. And so I did create one, if Erica will pull that up. And um, it has been um, used quite a bit by the students. And so they always feel there's something there for them that they can go to if they can't reach me. Um, and in this site is um, primarily, a, uh, you know, it gives them a lot of resources. Mm -hmm. So they have, if you go to, um, so the TA materials, they have, uh, the TA program has its own curriculum and they all have binders. Sometimes students, you know, the new ones especially did not have a chance to get a binder because mm -hmm. we went online and we can't physically do anything else. So we, we do have a way for them to get that material that they need for the class uh, by just uh, requesting it online. Um, so the curriculum and, and you know, the, the other tabs are here just um, to explain to them what the curriculum is going to be, what it covers. And um, also we have the ELL, which is English Language Learner uh, tab. That is um, just the work readiness page. And this is part of their curriculum as well. Just really getting the participants ready for work once they finish the program. Mm -hmm. Then we have the resource page, which is the one that's mostly used right now, and this is really getting them ready for work once they're complete with their, they have their certificates, and also how to apply for online um, on their, they have to create an online profile, all personnel, school personnel have to, has to, so they have all of these resources here for them. As we work with them, they can just always check here. Uh, one thing that was very useful at the top of this very page is the employability skills. If you just scroll up to the top of the page a little bit, this is really important, the very top here, because it really, um, part of our work is really uh, helping them understanding skills, soft skills, hard skills, and also transferable skills when they are building their resume. So mm -hmm. I already noticed that they are actually going to here. I can tell that they're using it because they, I know the information that they're pulling from is from here. So this has been a great page for them. Also, um, one thing that I did add to this site was the DL tips, and that's distance learning tips. This is all new to everyone on how to, you know, being online or distance learning. And so this is just for them to understand that some of the things that can uh, make it easier for them to uh, have a better experience online. Mm -hmm. And so it just kind of gives them some tips on what to consider when they are sitting down to a classroom, classroom online like this, right? Bottom, I know that um, you're, you're beginning to finish up on these classes. And now that you have this support system in place, um, you have some other classes that are starting? Yes, uh, we do have still, we already have some registered students for May, for May class. And so uh, we're now just collecting that number of students to and confirm that they are going to take the class in May. So I think that, that next cohort. I think that uh, when we talked earlier, it was really some information about we know that um, we have people who have degrees and people who don't have degrees that apply for the program. Mm -hmm. um, we are continuing to screen for people, but we have some openings, I believe, for people who may already have an associate or bachelor's degree who are interested in getting this certification. So 
if they wanted to get more information, I'm sure they could go to info at riilsr.org or even call the Institute at our number at 463-9900 and somebody will get back to them about if there are seats available, if they wanted to enroll in an upcoming class to be certified as a teacher assistant for the state. Yeah, that would be great. And we would um, definitely open that up to them if and people are beginning to call or email. So, um, yeah. I have a question um, for both so of you. I'm getting a lot of good feedback also from students. They really do like the online classes and it's working out really well for them. Um, it became actually, a, for a lot of them, a convenient way of learning um, online. Yeah. That was, that was going to be my question for both of you is what is the feedback that you're getting from students? Has this process been a smooth transition with all of the work that you guys have both done with, especially with the Google sites? Yeah. Um, like I was saying, it has been, uh, you know, the feedback has been very positive and I'm really mm -hmm. happy to actually take the time to, to give me feedback. Um, and also I started to, um, take their questions and created a frequently asked questions um, page on the website so that they can get answers mm -hmm. uh, right away rather than trying to connect with me all the time to get answers. So right. okay. very successful. Good. Er Erica, can we jump over to you quickly to talk about um, you run our leadership for a future program and it's kind of an interesting year for the Institute. The Institute is 40 years old this year and you'll mm -hmm. see a logo uh, in a lot of places where 2020 equals 40 um, and we're looking at this 2020 as our vision for the future. Mm -hmm. um, nothing better than a vision for the future and be thrown into the fire on using online learning uh, and, and you had to do the transition for our leadership for a future class which has been running now since 2000. Yeah, so this is the 20th year for Leadership for Future. Yeah. How did you find the transition? Um, the transition, like uh, both Fatima and Sabine had mentioned, it was definitely a, a learning experience right at the start when it, everything kind of came to um, a head that first week. But it's been really great. I mean, we've been able to get all of our participants on our Zoom meetings every Monday. We're still meeting every Monday. Um, People, all the participants seem to really appreciate it. It's really nice to still be able to communicate with one another. We've had speakers come on through the Zoom meetings. It's like any other program, there's gonna be, it's, it creates some barriers, um, but we've been, been able to overcome them by whether it's just helping people figure out the technology, helping them better understand it. Um, it's difficult because a lot of the work that we do is around our community action projects. And it's really nice when you can work in peers on those. So you can bounce ideas off of each other. You can network with each other and find out who has resources in different areas to help you with your project. And it's harder when you can't have those peer conversations, but instead of the peer conversations, we're having an entire group discussion, which um, it's been really good so far. It's been good. Yeah. What observations? What observations do you have, Erica, around this transition? Um, I think the biggest observation is that we all are we've all been forced in a very short period of time to learn how to use all of this technology. So it's been difficult because we have so many speakers who have been uh, faculty of leadership for a future for probably since it started, right, 20 years ago. You'd know that better than I would. Um, so it's been difficult to make sure that folks are able to get on the technology and able to give the same presentation that they would. Uh, last week we had Patrick Crowley and from the Rhode Island AFL-CIO, and he was able to do his presentation, share his screen so that we could all see his PowerPoint, and still be able to give the same presentation he did. Unfortunately, he couldn't see everybody's faces at the same time when you're sharing your screen. Um, but it's still, I was able to record it. So we had two people who were not able to be there, but I was able to record it so that we could actually send it to them, which is not something we've been able to do in the past. And I mean, as much as there has been barriers, there's been even more so doors opened by learning how to use all this technology. So that's exciting. 
I, I think the, I think there's a lot to be said for at a time of crisis. There's always some good things that come from it, or mm -hmm. you know, at a very difficult time. And we know that um, the institute is working hard to make sure that we we reach out to and support the population of people mm -hmm. um, that we generally work with on, in on, on, in a normal environment. Right. Um, but but I think we all recognize that after this is over we will probably continue to offer online options in the same areas for people, whether it is a, a one single unit in the ESOL classes, mm -hmm. a unit or a cadre in the TA program, offering the opportunity for people who miss a class to be able to pick up on the class that was missed mm -hmm. so that there's more consistency. Um, and, and I, you know, I really do look forward to how this crisis will offer the opportunity for other people to use technology. And, I, and, and, and even in the technologies themselves, they have come up with improvements midstream. Right. And whether we're talking about um, changes that Google has made or changes that Zoom and many others have made, um, it has during this time frame made a big difference. And I want to take a few minutes to recognize the people in the community who have, like the Institute, tried to support the community. And whether we're talking about grocery workers who are there or people who stock the shelves, um, all of these people, the bus drivers who continue to get people to work, issues around our first responders and healthcare providers who have always been the first line of defense. But now we see grocery workers, like I say, and bus drivers and people who stock shelves, who work side by side with our first responders to make sure um, that we really do provide the opportunity for people to be, at least feel safe and secure and have the opportunity to get their groceries and prescriptions and the development and, and the good work that the governor has done in, in yeah. working with other sites to get food delivered in a different fa format. So I think it, it, it has really pulled the community together to try and find alternative ways of helping everybody get through this and develop a broader community. Mm -hmm. Any yeah. observations for anybody? I think that sums it up. Yeah, we're learning things that we'll use, we'll continue to use after this is all over. So. Right, and it's. I think it's really great that we're sharing resources. As Sabine mentioned, when you guys are sharing the work that you guys are doing on your programs with the other programs around the state, it's, we're stronger together. So it's really helpful that uh, we can learn things on our own, but then share those with each other so that we can all learn from it and get better from it. Hey guys, I really want to thank you for taking the time because I know that uh, we met once already this morning in a staff meeting and then went immediately into this labor vision show, the at home edition, as you call it, Erica. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so I, I, I appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, I want to make sure that people know that they can reach out to the Institute either at info, info at riilsr.org or using our telephone number at 401-463-9900 and somebody will answer that call and get back to you about if there's inter interest that you have in training in uh, we continue to do our work with state employees for their incentive programs. So there's a variety of things that we continue to do, but we, the Institute is really interested in, in helping to continue and to build that community that you talked about, Erica. I wanna thank you for continuing to uh, ensure that Labor Vision is posted on our Labor Vision TV site. And you may wanna mention where people can go to see this. Well, if uh, folks are tuning in from home, you can go to our new website, which is www.laborvisionri.org, or you can also check us out on Facebook or Instagram and Twitter. We have, um, we're Labor Vision RI, at Labor Vision RI is our username. And you can also go to our YouTube page, which is Labor Vision TV One. Hey, that's really, uh, that's, I uh, thank you for all the work that you've done. Fatima, Sabine, Erica, and on behalf of everybody at the Institute, the Board of Directors, and all of the instructors, I want to thank you for the work that you're doing in helping to keep the community safe, wear a mask, sanitize your hands, wash your hands, do everything that we can so that we give the opportunity for 
people to begin to move back to work as quickly as we can and get back to this new normal. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Labor Vision. We appreciate your input and encourage your comments. Labor Vision can be seen on this channel three times each week, Tuesday at 7 p.m., Thursday at 8 p.m., and Saturday at 5 p.m.